Hello everyone! In today's live stream, we're going to be continuing our package resolved port to the Playdate and continuing to learn the Playdate SDK. In this stream, we're hoping to mainly focus on creating some of the prototype content and more importantly, learning the APIs for the crank. Moving left and right, just using nothing but the crank. So this will definitely be an interesting stream. Um, so hello to everyone that is just streaming in. Hello, Quantum Mechanics Dragon. I see you there. How's everyone doing here? Right, right. <laughs> so I should make a couple of announcements before um, we get started with this. I made a couple of minor changes um, to the code base since earlier this week Panic had released an update to the Playdate SDK, which is how we're creating the game in the first place um, to 2.2. So I made some changes just to make sure that the game would compile under that new SDK version. Um, and I did spend some extra time focusing a bit more on polishing up the README by including some build instructions so that way anybody that decides to follow along and try this themselves can do so right here. I also included a new Clang format just so that way our C files and H files are formatted consistently. Um, I just kind of used the default settings from the LLVM style with just a couple of minor changes here and there to fit more my preferences. So, I guess we go back to the discovery tree to see where we're starting. Hello, Zach. I see you there. Ah, I should also mention, um, since I am back at my desk with my setup, I have two monitors now. So I have OBS on this window over here so I can see your chats now instead of having to fangle around with windows to try and get the chat going. Finally. About time, right? <laughs> So looking at our discovery tree, um, so we can quickly follow down the line, right? Our purples mean our in progress. So we kind of go down here, working on creating the prototype. And under that, we're doing some basic movement. And today we're going to be looking at all of these little bubbles under, under this particular um, node in our tree. So this will focus on just kind of reading the crank's rotation angle translating that to a movement vector, and then just moving something on the screen according to the crank. Because this should be the fundamentals for how movement will actually work in the game. Um, there may be a couple other changes we'll have to do, but this should at least be the gist of it. If time allows, we'll maybe delve a little bit more into the sprites and images, since that's also going to be another important part of this as well, with the sprite sheets and the background and all that. So without further ado, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're doing here. So if I were to quickly run what we currently have, we just have a simple hello world on the screen that just shows in a very random location because we just decided random numbers last week. Um, so we'll probably reuse the text drawing to show something on the screen to indicate whether we're moving back and forth. And you can also see the new formatting on the source files here. Um, I had to do some weird stuff with the formatting here for some reason because Nova slash Clank format just does not like this preprocessor macro for some reason. Maybe it's because this just isn't defined on Mac OS, so it's just like, oh, I don't know. But we'll see. Also, it is getting dark in this corner. One moment while I go fix that. Okay, that's better. <laughs> I mean, I do have like a nano leaf thing up here, but it doesn't nearly get as bright enough during the day. <laughs> Stack time, yeah. That, that's the official break screen I have. <laughs> Figured it'd fit with the Playdate theming, you know? So. 
So I suppose, let's see here. I guess the first thing we want to do is probably get some sort of indication of moving, or some indication of like a position on the screen. And I think the best way to do that would be to have some sort of vector struct. So let me check to see if C already has this. If not, we can write our own. I don't think that'd be too bad. Uh, yeah, not seeing anything here. Okay, yeah, so we'll probably just write our own. It won't be that bad, I suppose. Um, so I guess let's get that underway here. Uh, let's see if I remember how to do this. Vector, wow, I know how to spell. Vector dot C, okay, include standard lib dot H, include, I don't know if we'll need the standard IO here, but we'll just have it just in case. Um, I don't think we'll need the Playdate API here just yet either. Now, I know we can do def, come on, oh. okay, I'm going nuts here. Okay, let me just at least set this part up, x int, y int, or no, that's not how you write it. I am thinking, uh, <laughs> I am thinking of Swift, since, of course, that's the language that I write in most of the time. Type def struct, I believe, and then we just do vec2 like this. I believe so. I don't know, let's see. Vec2 zero is... Is this being done right? Mm. I appear to have forgotten how to write structs. Lovely. <laughs> when you do Swift for so long, you forget how to do things with oh okay I see I see that's how you do it okay that's a little it's a little weird but we'll go with that ah you know what that's what I want that right there is what I want so we could say um vec to zero is right yeah and then we can say zero zero like this I'm not gonna get any syntax highlighting for that or whatever but it's fine oh I didn't realize the simulator was still running whoops okay so that's good that's good right there um now I'm trying to remember, how do we do this for a header file? Because we'll need to declare that as well. It must be visible. Write your code as... Yeah, okay. We can do that. We can do that. That's fine by me. Um, so let's create that vector dot h. If and def vector h def define. Am I doing that right? Hold up.
just want to make sure that that's being written correctly. Um, define, yes, OK. We're getting there. Though I probably want to do that instead. And if. OK, there we go. We got a struct. <laughs> Um, we don't need the zero, but I'll take that. Um, so I think this should allow us to then say include vector.h. So then we can say int drawn. We're just going to do this as a test to see um, if this actually works is 250. Um, so then I think we can say text position x, text position y, show report. Oh, do we not use the arrow? Do we use the dot? Ah, we use the dot because it's a struct. Ooh, warning, excess elements in scalar initializer. Error expected. Am I defining the structure wrong again? Uh -oh. Uh -oh. That's not particularly promising. Expected before struct. Um, oh, do I need to move struct out? Build failed. No. I've forgotten how we do this. See structure. Really? Can we just call it struct that way? Have I been thinking of something else entirely? Use struct to refer to the type. Ah, ha 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 ha. Uh, ha, ha, ha. Are we getting somewhere? OK, we're back in business. We're back in business. <laughs> Silly of me to have forgotten the basics. It's all right. That's the whole point of this, right? Swift developer fumbles around with C after not writing it for so many years. Let me check what's going on in the chat here. Oh, hey, Aton, what's going on? Also, I just realized we're supposed to be in this mode, not the other mode. Sorry about that. OK, that's good, yummy. Um, so I'm just going to run the format files real quick. Good. Um, I'll keep the C file for now because we may decide to add more methods to it. Yes, OK. Add new vector struct. Excellent. Excellent, OK. So let me check our tree again to see if, did we actually include that in here? No, we did not. OK, that's fine. Um, I suppose we could probably start could probably have this be our temporary position. So let's set this back to zero. I'm going to set that back to zero again. So that means we should be in the top left corner? Yes. OK. Great. Um, 
So that's not a problem. So I guess now let's figure out how to get the crank. Well, hold on. Let me actually try something else real quick. Um, for now, we're just going to remove our drawn check um, because for this instance, we're going to definitely want this to be updating. And I think what we'll do for now anyway, just to test that this works, um, text position dot x is equal to, I don't know if you can actually do that. Actually, I think you should be able to like this. And then if text position dot x is greater than 400, then we just do text position is zero. Thing if we got this incompatible types. Oh, that would do it. <laughs> Look at that. It's now a marquee. <laughs> oh, brother. Um, Okay, so that's a good sign. That's a good sign there. Um, though it is kind of going off the screen a little bit, but this is at least a good sign um, because then we can manipulate this text position to do what it is that we need. Um, so I guess in that case, let's consult the manual. Let's go look at the crank. Cranky crank. Crank? Okay. Um, I need to do this. Read the crank's rotation angle. Okay, there we go. We're getting there. We're getting there. Ah, okay. Good start, good start. Um, so we do get a float back. Um, so playdate system get crank angle. So that's probably what we want here. Returns the current position of the crank in the range 0 to 360. 0 is pointing up and the value increases as the crank moves clockwise as viewed from the right side of the device. Okay. Okay, okay. Um, now, I think that may put a slight issue because we're having our vec2 as an int or as an integer vector here. So I may want to change this to have both support for ints and floats. So let's do that, um, float x, float y, and then what we'll do here is I will change this to be vec to f, and I think we can just say 0f on these, and we should still be okay. Expected. Oh, if text position X is greater than 400 F, did we goof up somewhere? Let me look at the build report again. Whoa. Thank you. We'll put you to the side there. Make that a little bigger. Uh, identifier before int. So it's screaming about something up here. Okay, that's a little interesting. Oh. Because we didn't define a uh, thing there. Okay. 
invalid suffix f on integer constant. Oh, do we not do that? Do we just do that? Ah, OK. OK, so we've preserved that. That's good. Um, so we know that it goes up as high as the crank. All right, so it goes up to 360. So I think what we'll do for the time being, um, just to kind of play around with this, um, so we'll just say float uh, crank position. And we want to go to arc. That's what we want to do. Plate 8 system get crank angle. OK. Plate 8 system get crank angle. OK. Um, so let's say text position dot x is the crank position. And then I think think what this will do is not exactly what I want because we called it PD, not play date. Okay, so now let's use our simulator features. Woo! <laughs> okay, we are getting somewhere. So that's good. Um, that is very good. OK, that works. So at least we know how to get the crank angle and manipulate something with the position. So I'll take that. I'll take that. Um, so we actually managed to skip ahead a little, move something according to the crank. So now we just need to figure out a better um, movement vector for this. Um, so I think what we'll do is I don't want this to be clogging up the entirety of the main the main file so we'll just create another we'll just create another set of uh, things here so I think for now we will just say uh, movement dot C oh, how did I do that movement dot C having a hard time clicking today new file movement dot H um, so we'll set this up again if and def movement H define movement H and if okay um, I think we also want to import the vector here as well. So include vector.h, right? Because we'll need access to that. Um, so then I think we want to have this be a vec2 that, um, so get movement or get translated movement um, and then we'll say a vec2 containing our original position and then a float which contains the crank angle right um, so then we can go back to here into you here I'm just gonna copy you oh that's why okay that's fine, that's fine. Um, then we'll also include the standard lib here. Okay, so then I guess we just now define this from the prototype that we just wrote. Get translated movement. Um, so then we just need to create a new struct vec to new vector is um, I'll just do original dot 
x original dot y. Oh, I also just realized we need to make these vec2 f's. Where's my movement.h? Okay, let's close out of those. Vec2 f, f. Okay, um, fine. So then for now, we'll just do new. Well, actually, we could just replace it with this, huh? Crank angle. Just for now, anyway. Return new vector. I hope that works. We'll see. Um, include movement.h. So then all we need to do, I think, is struct vec to f. Or can we just say text position is get translated movement of text position and our crank position? Do we see the light? No, we do not. Because implicit declaration unknown type name vec2f. Oh, because we need to do that. We also need to do it here. And here. Undefined reference to get translated movement. But we defined it in movement.h. OK, that's a little interesting. Hmm. Also, I'm going to move this out put it back into here new vector dot x new vector dot x is that um, so we're good there now remind me why we're not doing this undefined reference even though we literally have defined it here in movement.h. Hmm. OK, that's a little funky. Is there something that I forgot to do wrong? Undefined reference. We need to ask. Oh, I think I have an idea. That might be why. Build fit? No. Vec two. F, vec2 f yeah there we go that's what it was so long story short make sure to update your make file <laughs> okay so that's good that means we've managed to move the vector capabilities out um so that's good um 
I'm going to also set up some other parts in this. So we can do a define screen width it's 400f, and then define screen height. Not that we'll need the screen height, I don't think, but according to the HIG, it is 240. Okay, so then we can say screen width. I'm just gonna run that again, just to make sure that I have done my things correctly. Excellent, okay. We're schmoovin'. We are schmoovin'. Now I do wanna think that we're already in a good spot here, right? Because we're able to move this back and forth. I mean, it is kind of cropping a little bit, but I think we can fix this by just like making this a smaller with an at symbol mm, not so much okay um that's interesting very interesting um so I think, and also another thing I noticed too, is that when we start, oh, okay, I see. So we'll probably wanna do that as well. I believe we have an API to check whether the, yeah, is crank docked. So let's get that as well going. Um, If PD system is crank docked, then we set our text position. Oh, okay, I see. That's an interesting quirk of the simulator. Okay. Fine by me. I mean, you know, I think it's at least good that we're checking that. Um, I'm just gonna run format files real quick. So we're doing good there. Okay. Now the only thing we need to figure out is just the little weirdness going on there, but. So this is a good, good start. Um... Okay, let's commit that then. Um... Well, actually, before we do this, let's write some comments here. Um... Translate. A movement vector according to the crank's position angle parameter original the original movement vector to translate Parameter crank angle. Um, the current angle the crank is at. If the crank is engaged. Cool. Um, and so then returns. A translated vector accounting 
for the crank's angle. Very good. Okay. Um, so let's commit all these files. Move according to the crank. Movement is separated into its own files to clean up the code. Current iteration skips a little at around the 100 mark, likely from a miscalculation. Services commit. Excellent. Um, that's a good start. We're making some good progress, everyone. So let's go back to our tree. We can mark that as complete. And technically, we got that complete, too. Um, now, the only thing I want to check is to see if there's anything about the screen, because it could be that my assumption about the screen's dimensions is a little off. Video, perhaps? Load video? Get screen context? No, okay, that's, that's not what I'm looking for. Signals, envelope, display. If the scale is 2, this returns 120 instead of 240. Hmm, okay. Okay, um, and these do return integers back, so I guess we could modify this. Yeah, let's do that a little bit. Um, so we could do a vec to, do we want to do a vec2i or a vec2f in this case? I think it would make sense to just do this, bounds parameter bounds the bounds of the screen by which the position cannot be translated past funky but we'll go with it. Vec2f um, bounds. Before I forget, I need to make sure to add the struct keyword just to make sure that it doesn't go all crazy like that. Um, so we can get rid of these constants then. Um, so then we can say bounds dot x. Likewise, we'll do the same thing here if new vector dot y is greater than bounds dot y new vector dot y is 0 f that works um, so then all we need to do is we just need to translate our screen height and screen width now one thing I need to check float C, just to make sure we know what we're doing here. Integer of a division truncates. You can cast float or multiply number divided by total? Well, that's a percentage thing. Okay, so we could just typecast it. Cool. Nothing weird I gotta do. That's fine. Um, so then I guess back to F screen bounds is 0.0F, 0.0F, okay, vec, or, no, first of all, I need to be smarter about this, struct, okay, screen
screen bounds dot x should be the int of pd. No, uh, we want a float. So pd, what is it? Display, display, get height. Screen bounds dot y is the same thing except for the y position. Get. Oh, I have this backwards. This should be width. This should be height. And now we just pass this in here and we should be good to go. I ran the formatter, not the simulator. Mm, okay, it's still being a little funny, but it could be just because we have this scaled. I bet if we were to... Not quite. It's probably because we're not accounting for the center or something of it. If I were to hazard a guess. Um, that's fine, though. Um, but since we're getting this... I think what we can do to start is I want to at least get an initialization going for this to put that street in the center. So we're going to do um, let's just import the bool standard bool dot h. So then we can say da 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 bool initialized game loop false. Okay. Um, if if we didn't initialize the game loop, oh, you know what? We should probably put this here, right? Um, if initialized game loop, then what we're going to do is we're going to say that the text position is float yeah this is what we want. Uh, screen bounds.x divided by 2 followed by 0.0f. 0 .0 and I think that would be okay. And then we're just going to short circuit this. Build failed. Uh oh. Expected expression before token. Okay, I see what we gotta do. Though I don't think we actually need to assign the thing. Um, and then we'll also say initialized game loop is true, so that way we can let the rest of the game's execution take place. Or we also need to call that. I'm sure there's a better way to do that right now, but we're just being a little fancy. Build succeeded. Not exactly the center of the screen that I was going for, but okay, I'll take it. <laughs> yeah, so the logic still kind of checks. Um, I still don't know why it's doing that, though. 2x display. Hmm... We probably have to offset it somehow. Things to think about anyway. Um, so let's take care of that. Um, use Playdate's screen APIs for balance. This also puts the character in the center. Supposedly. Okay. 
Okay. Um, well, that's good. Things are going to be a little bit off, and I'm sure we'll figure that out in due time. But we seem to be in a much better position right now, because that means that we have gotten basic movement done. Yay! Which means we can move on to drawing sprites and images, which is going to be fun. Um, I did not prepare any images for this. <laughs> Oops. Um, that's something we'll need to figure out as well. Um, so in the meantime, let me take a look at the chat here to see what's going on. Can't hear you, never mind. Was on my end. Oh, I didn't realize. Maybe my audio cut out for a brief moment. Um that's sometimes well, at least according to the last stream that didn't happen. Maybe it's happened again now that I moved to a different spot. I hope it doesn't happen though. Okay. Okay. Um so I guess let's see what we can do about getting this taken care of then. So we'll do draw basic image. Um, so I'm just going to need an image to start with, huh? Uh, I should have better planned for this one. Because um, I do not have an image offhand to actually... Draw. Hmm. Got to think about that. Well. Okay, I know what we can do. I know what we can do here. Um. Yeah, okay. I know what we'll do. I know what we will do. Because um, I still have the source images for the splash screen of the game. Though it's not uh, prime time for... <laughs> for the Playdate screen size. Um, so I will probably have to reach out to the... Um, artists to get that taken care of probably so we'll do that um we want to change the palette to be black and white can i have this already set to be 400 dithering do we want to try the bear one instead oh god bear looks worse I mean, I don't know why we're really playing around with that, but, you know, we're doing it live. <laughs> we're doing it live. That's what we do around here. Atkinson is very contrasty. Jarvis... Mm, it's okay. Burks... Meh. Sierra... Also kind of meh, not gonna lie. How about two Sierra? No, Sierra Light. Okay, so it's probably a mix. Well, Floyd's. Hmm. What was the one that I liked? No, it wasn't Burks. I think it was Atkinson. I think we'll try the Atkinson one for now, because I think that'll help. Um, okay. So we have that underway. So let's switch back to Affinity Photo real quick so I can create a new, oh, we're already here. 400 by 240. Yes, um, so we will just now take our dither it and just resize this so that way it fits fits the frame I'm forgetting my controls apparently 
Yeah, I mean, that kind of works. Um, so we'll do that. And we'll save it to the downloads for now. Splash. Okay, now this is where we have to start doing some more learning to figure out how we can structure the project to do what we want. So for now, let's go to... Oh, I didn't realize I put the copies of the SDK side by side. That's a little... That's a little weird. Uh, da, da, da. Game template, source, system, assets, card, launch image, flippy fish, source... Okay, so it looks like you just put it in the source folder. That's fine. We can do that. We can do that. Images. Open with the finder. And then we'll just drag splash.png right into that. Um, so I think what we'll also do is I will comment this part of the code out because I think we'll need to do some more information with that. So let's go revisit the API. Let's go take a look at some images. Graphics. LCD bitmap. Set image draw mode. Set font. Oh, is that? Oh, we'll have to take a look at that. Hmm. Okay. Um, let's go back to that example. Oh, no. Wait. I want C API examples. That's what we want. Particles. Life. Source. Particles. Source. Images. Yeah. Okay. So let's. Uh, sprite game. Ah. You know what? That contains some information. We'll take that. Open you straight up in Nova. Let's take a look and see how they do this. Load image at path. PD graphics load bitmap. Yeah, OK. OK, that's what we're going to want to do as well. Got it. OK. OK. Um, so I guess let's write that as well. Guess we'll do images dot h if and def images h define images h and if split that off. Um, oh, we also need to include the PD dot, is it PDH or PD underscore API? And then we need to make that a, there we go. Okay, that's great. Um, so I think then, since my understanding is there's a graphics, since stencil image, where is that example again? Load image at path. OK. OK, that's fine. That is fine. So I guess we could kind of yoink that. So we'll do a LCD bitmap. And I think according to that, it is a. Yeah, OK, that should be a pointer load bitmap const char star path and I think that's all that this method needs right yeah we'll worry about error handling later that'll be fine um, so then we just need to do images.c as well 
do the same thing here, include pd api.h. And then the other thing is we need to go back to the make file to add that. src images.c. OK. Um, so all we need to do then is we just need to define this method. Now, apparently we have a, oh, does it actually show the load bitmap in here? Supporting types, clear bitmap, draw bitmap. Ah, that's probably what we'll want later. Load into bitmap, yes, here we are. Okay, so we're also going to need a pointer, okay. Um, so the way that the example did it is, okay, yeah, they just made a, no, like this, and then all we need to do then is, oh, we also need to pass in the, yeah, uh, how did we do this again? I'm trying to remember. Was it just, yeah, playdate API PD. That's what we want. So then we can say PD, graphics load bitmap. Yes, graphics load bitmap. Does this return the, yes it does. Um, so LCD bitmap, star, PD graphics load bitmap. Um, and then I think we just pass in the, yes, so the path. And then the error. Now, do we need to put an ampersand in front of that? Or. Yes, we do. And then we'll just return. Oh, we never said. Uh, return bitmap. Is that how this worked too as well? Is LCD bitmap star image? Oh, because I never put an assignment. Okay. Okay. <sighs> We're fine. We're fine. Okay. Um. So then we'll do LCD bitmap star splash is load bitmap const char path we also need to include this include images dot h right load bitmap at and then we just give it the path I think if that works. Um, I don't think it will, but we'll see. If splash is not equal to null, then we'll do pd graphics. Where was it? Draw bitmap. And then we just pass in our splash. Zero, zero, LCD bitmap flip. LCD bitmap flip. K bitmap unflipped. And we are going a little bit over time, but I think we can ride this out for a couple more minutes. Error, initializer element is not constant. What? What does that mean? What does that mean in this context? <laughs> That's not good. Um, initializer element is not constant. Uh, what does that mean? 
I'm trying to initialize variable or const. Did I put a const somewhere where I shouldn't have? LCD bitmap splash is this. Did you want me to put const this way? Discards const no. That's not what we want. Ooh. Oh, you know what? Maybe it just doesn't like the um, const char star uh, splash patch. Splash path is that images splash dot png, and then we'll do this splash path. Maybe that's why it's freaking out. No, initializer element is not constant, but we don't want it to be a constant. <sighs> Fine. Do we need to move it into the thing here. That might be what it is. Um, is that right? And then we just return one. Well, actually, we don't need to do that because it will always return one at the bottom. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. The simulator did not like that. So maybe we need to go a little further? No. Oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Um, let me look at this. Package resolved. Show package contents images splash.pdi. Maybe I don't need the file extension. Maybe it's freaking out because of that. No, you did not like that either. Could also be because we're trying to load this. LCD star bitmap star slash. And then we'll just do that. No, you didn't like that either. Hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Well, that's not particularly great. So we know that the issue is somewhere floating around in. Oh, that actually tells me load bitmap. Thirty-two images dot c five. Did we forget to do something? Oh, we did. We did. We forgot to pass in the playdate thing. <laughs> what? Load map, load bitmap, splash path, const path. Did we mess something up? We did. I think we still have the wrong signature. We still have the wrong signature. No, you still didn't like that. Well, that's not particularly great. Um, what if we did that instead? Okay. Okay, that's what it was. Yeah, silly me. Forgot that. <laughs> well, the good news is we have a basic image on the screen, right? Like that. That's that's good progress. It may not look the best because it wasn't designed to be this small scale, but. It works. I'll take that as a, I'll take that as a bonus. Um, so we'll commit that for now. Um, show a basic image on the screen, and I think what we'll do is we'll create a new branch from this, just so that way it's not clogging up the main thing. Feature sprites. Okay. Okay, so that's a good sign. So we'll close out of you. And you. And you. Oh, and you as well. Where are we going? Discovery tree. Okay. 
So it looks like next week we're going to be continuing here. We're going to try and use a sprite sheet to draw some things and move and redraw our image according to the movement vector that we defined earlier. So this is going to be fun. Also, I just realized I was enlarged this entire time. Whoops. <clears throat> I have a bad habit of doing that. Someone's got to remind me, hey, you need to put it back in the other mode. Sorry. <laughs> um, okay, so in that case, I think that is where we will leave the stream at. So thanks, everyone, for joining. Hope to do this again next week where we can pick up where we left off here. So until then... Happy coding.